there's different branches of Judaism, and reform is often considered progressive, liberal, with the idea that um, we have the Torah, we were given the Torah, and that's really um, guidelines in which we should live our lives. So we don't live by the rule of the Torah and everything that they say, but it's more interpretation within the lens of modern day. So that's what reform means. So um, at Beth Emmet, we do a lot of questioning. We, you know, we read the Torah, and then we have a lot of conversation and questions of what did it mean then, and what does it mean now, and really um, how we live our lives based on this. The idea of Reformed Judaism, again, is like living Judaism within a contemporary society. And so Orthodox um, does not recognize those who practice Judaism who are not Jewish. So if a couple is married and there's one spouse who's not Jewish, um, that person is not acknowledged, so to speak. Whereas in Reformed congregations, we know that um, today, plenty, many, 50%, the numbers are all over the place, but at least 50% of um, Jewish adults marry those who aren't Jewish or are in partnership with someone who's not Jewish. And so the idea is that we know, um, and here's an opportunity to bring into the conversation um, and to, to experience the Jewish community in general. So we also know that oftentimes it's the non-Jewish spouse or partner who also kind of pushes the conversation with those who grew up Jewish. And so it's been a very interesting experience for us. Um, in the more traditional community, those who aren't Jewish are really encouraged to convert. Not, they don't proselytize per se, but they um, really encourage conversion. Um, in the Orthodox community, it needs to be converted by an Orthodox rabbi. So if someone within the Reform Movement decides to convert um, and they move into an Orthodox, more traditional community, they wouldn't be acknowledged as being Jewish. So they would have to either go through it again or just live with the idea that they're not acknowledged. There's definitely like a nine to five aspect of it. And so for a lot of our congregation, our work in the professional world, so they're working in law firms, and they're working in you know doctor's practice, that type of thing. And so there's definitely that sense of um, being very insular. And so at Beth Emmett, we're really trying to kind of push that and to offer people new opportunities um, sometimes to get them out of their comfort zone and to begin to bridge that gap. And we hope that relationships are being built and that will, you know, whether it be social, educational, learning, partnership, whatever, that people will um, incorporate that into their lives as well. We are in partnership with Second Baptists in terms of a lot of these types of conversations. So how can we bring the two faith-based communities together, even though they're Baptist and we're Jewish, there's a lot of commonalities. And so knowing that you know, we worship as Jews and they worship as Baptists, the idea is that how can we begin to bridge that conversation and really spend our off hours out of the office and using our faith communities as another way in which to bridge that, which, uh, which is um, very important. So we're also trying to find you know, people respond to different modalities. So, you know, worshiping together, we're trying to find ways in which we can worship together. Um, social justice, you know, types of programs. So we're doing the Crop Walk together, which is a North Shore um, Walk for Hunger, trying to raise money for hunger. Um, we're doing a lot of educational programs together, and we are now working on a teen program to bring the teens to the South together, to learn together. And so, um, hoping again to kind of break the nine to five of separate communities and kind of bringing them together in our off hours. And, and it's definitely true. Um, on our staff here at Beth Emmett, we also have um, folks that we make sure um, to engage those who aren't Jewish into our, into our work world, and they are constantly keeping us aware as well. Like, how do we use the language? How do we um, program? How do we, um, you know, how are we communicating Judaism? And so they've also kind of helped us in terms of bridging that gap. I think the role of conversation is, um, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's not a speaker in front of a crowd, it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And I think that if you are in conversation, you're building relationships and you begin to understand the other, whether the other be those who are more traditional, um, those who are African-American, those who are Muslim, whatever the other is, once you're in conversation and you listen, and I think that's part of the conversation, um, we'll begin to start breaking down those barriers and really building a relationship, hopefully for a better world. And that's ultimately what we hope our faith-based community, what Beth Emmett will do, and the work that we do in the schools and in Evanston in general. Um, that will really, once we start doing that, that'll be the key to our future.